Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today we are sharing a clip from one of our live sessions where you'll be seeing your meaningful questions are answered and paid much attention to. So let's dive into the video. What authorization needed to create the VNet pairing? See, network contributor role is more than enough. So if you are even working as a contributor, you can take the action, right? To create, because here you are just taking an action on the connectivity part. But in order to create a network, then you might require on both the networks, absolutely path. Yeah, minimum contributor will be required. Because until and unless this person doesn't have the accessibility to the another network, right? Definitely you cannot form because it's a two-way action. It's the same thing, uh, Partha. I mean, let's say if I would like to have a communication with somebody, only having a phone number of that particular person is not enough. That person person should have to pick the call as well, right? So connectivity is kind of a communication. Until and unless you don't have a consent from the another network as well, I cannot form a connectivity just because I want to create a connectivity. Yeah. If the cross region VNet pairing goes via Microsoft backbone, what about the security? Will the Microsoft will be able to see this data? Chandra, always remember if we are using the provider, right? So definitely a provider is providing the service and the provider has to be compliant with NIST, ISO, PCI compliant, right? Any particular business, if a provider is there, right? Provider has to be qualified enough that there will be a amount of the security that provider will be managing. Is a similar kind of a question, uh, Chandra. I mean, let's say if I will be using Azure VM and I will save any data on the VM, will Microsoft will be able to see that particular data? Because that VM will be totally created by Microsoft. Mention that any ways to secure the communication over the Azure version using CMK as we can with the data at rest. See, Parth, understand one thing, right? Moving the data right and the data is coming you know through the network right there are two different things over here right when you are using that cmk over here any sort of the key right when the data has been encrypted and keep it stored over there right that understand if you talk about the different layers of the osi right there will be an application layer there will be you know layer for the session presentation we are talking about networking over here we are dealing with the transport layer right and transport layer always will be using what guys your ip and the protocol when we are dealing with the data over here the traffic supposed to be coming over http and https or over the tls as well absolutely but the traffic has to be the web traffic make sense here we are not dealing with the web traffic path are we clear yeah this is your transport layer traffic that we are talking about but when you create a database connectivity after forming the connectivity you use connect connection string through the api isn't it that's where the that data is. comes right so connectivity is has to be there so that you can form that connection string part if you are using infrastructure as a service right the tls encryption part that you are talking about over here well as this tls comes into the picture over http and https right for the tls offloading or any particular mechanism that you required where the certificates are required at the api part make sense Okay. So wherever, whenever the communication will be happening over the TLS, it has to be a web based application, right? Where the traffic supposed to hit on the web and that web will take care of the data transfer to your databases over there through the connection string, right? Here, we are not talking about that particular part. We are just talking about forming a connectivity only, right? That will come into the picture. If you have a hosted a web based application over here and another database is running on the another VM and through which you will be forming the connectivity part, then it will come into the picture. Make sense? Okay okay yeah so when you are dealing with the application layer currently there is no application layer involvement at the moment we are just forming the connectivity okay yeah, yeah. Uh, so whenever we are talking about that then it will be coming into the picture that you know because over here whenever you will be using the keys where the key will be there either you will be directly using the key or whether the key will be in the key vault and what is the key vault it's a pass platform as a service isn't it okay because we don't have a control on the environment of that service. That service is managed by Microsoft. We are just using that service. Where? Over HTTP and HTTPS. What I'm saying that if you have a dedicated connection, you don't require this. 
This required when the traffic come over HTTP and HTTPS because the traffic will be coming from the outside. Then you required encryption over there. If you directly have a dedicated channel through which you are creating a connectivity, right? You don't mm -hmm. require this. That connectivity is dedicated only for you. Only your traffic is flowing from where you require the security from. See, the thing is, in that case, you know, there are options available for the private endpoints. Yeah. Okay. Whenever you will be creating the connectivity part, right? So whenever you are dealing with such kind of the requirement, because your database as a service is also available, not only on top of the VM, because on the VM you already have a control, right? If you're talking about, you know, Microsoft can see that data over here, then it's a data is transit security come into the picture. And that is the reason we are using TLS, isn't it? 1.2 latest. Okay. That encryption has to be there, right? See, whenever you talk about, you know, security, you know, we had a discussion on the security part that, you know, defense and depth model. Are we able to recall that one? Mm -hmm. Right, that physical security, then your Azure AD security, then your DDoS protection and the firewall security, then your network security yes. group. A security yeah, group, right? We talked about that, right? Yeah. Now, whenever you talked about the data, where is the data? Data is the end result, right? Where you will be dealing yes. with the encryption over there, right? Yeah. Now, data is transit over here comes over the application, and you form a connectivity with the help of that. And data at transit security will take care by putting a certificate at the API part. So, data is okay. coming encrypted, right? Understood. And what Understood. you do over there that whenever it will be coming in, you will be using end to end encryption for the TLS offloading. We'll talk about the application gateway eventually. So in application gateway, we put your web application behind the firewall. So whatever mm -hmm. traffic is coming, which is already encrypted. Okay. Now the moment firewall will come into the picture, packet inspection is already there, right? And once the packet inspection is already there, now it is ready to distribute the traffic to your web application. So it is already filtered from multiple channel. Now, once the traffic is hitting on the web application, now you are transferring the traffic from the web application to the database. Are you getting okay. a point? Got it. So data at rest security will be already there. But in case you would like to have the end to end encryption, you can have our certificate involved even by the time the traffic is reaching to your web application. So still the traffic is encrypted by the time it will hit your web application. So no need to worry about that particular TLS part because that is something that you will be using for the integration purpose. We'll talk about it when we'll touch okay. upon the application gateway. Yeah, no problem. so TLS discretion will not come into the picture because we are dealing at the transport layer. We are forming a connectivity and here every communication will be through IP address and the protocol. Another question uh, when I'm accessing database as a service like a managed mm -hmm. SQL instance and all that mm -hmm. um, do I need to worry about VNet pairing or it is no, it is no. uh, okay the reason is see the reason is we are when you t t take an example of a network connectivity right what we are talking about over here infrastructure as a service isn't it all your VMs network what okay, is it yeah. is it the part of the infra but the thing is the moment you will be going with the SQL database over here what is this database it is a managed service you are not managing any VM, isn't it? Yes. You are not even managing any operating system. Yes. You are just using the database service over here, right? So okay. over here, whenever you will be forming any connectivity, let's say you want dedicated channel to have it, right? So that networking option is available over here, whether you would like to allow the accessibility through the public endpoint or through the private network. I get my point. Let me put a name over here. Let me put this. Just give me one minute. Just give me one minute. That is the network setting comes over here in the networking part. See what it says public endpoint or the private endpoint. You want this okay. over the dedicated channel, keep it at the private endpoint, and you have to create a DNS for that. A private DNS zone associated with that subnet from where you would like to allow the connectivity. So this subnet will only go through the dedicated channel through this DNS only. Right? Okay. And for okay. your encryption, it will give you the option for the TLS. Encryption over here. Just give me one minute. Where will be that option? Here it will be. See this. TLS 1.2 is already there. Okay, understood. So okay. The, yeah. So this is how you control that particular part because here we are not controlling any VM basically. So you don't need to worry. Understood. Okay. Thank you. When to use VNet pairing over VPN gateway and vice versa. Okay, VK, uh, see, Microsoft backbone will be used when we are using VNet pairing, right? And it is charging you for incoming and outgoing data transfer for both. 
but if you are using vpn gateway it will only charge you for per hour basis and outgoing data transfer so for a small amount of the data transfer or let's say the you know if you required very fast connection between two networks vnet pairing is a better choice when you are dealing with the vnet to vnet connectivity within azure but v, vpn gateway will come into the picture when you need to transfer the data over the public ips when you need to send the petabyte of the information right so because relatively initially you seems like vpn gateway will be costing more but over the span of time more and more the data will be there vnet pairing will also going to cost you for incoming and outgoing both right but vnet pairing is only costing you for outgoing data transfer incoming will not be any charges over here only the per hour basis cost you will be paying for vpn gateway clear so when it is more performance is required vnet pairing is a better choice but we are not dealing with the performance let's say i am from the data analytics team my job is only to analyze the data and data is not even you know required then and there because analytics we do on the historical data so if we don't require the data very frequently over here or you know with a very high range of your speed i can probably go with a vpn gateway coming up how one on premises knows that the azure network in your azure we use local network gateway where we need to provide see bhupendra on the on premises the vpn gateway is already creating the connectivity over the public ip right and that option is already there on the on premises so on premises doesn't have that particular challenge because on premises vpn gateway will have an api through which you will be able to access that particular requirement Um, you know when you create side to side connectivity majorly you know side to side will connectivity will come into the picture when you are connecting to site let's say one entire site is running over here i need to transfer the data from one site to azure or azure to your on premises that side to side terminology comes into the picture when you will be using a vpn gateway point to site as we all are working from home due to covid right we know that you know we will be using a vpn connectivity now where the vpn connectivity will be forming over here creating the connection over vpn gateway only isn't it so that is your point to site connectivity that you have clear so point to site means when a single machine that you are trying to connect over here through a vpn right point to, and site to site when you are connecting to network site in the production Okay, do we require one question subnet per each vnet? Uh, Shiv, um, that is up to you. If you want a separate, you know, bastion host every network, definitely it will going to increase the cost. If the connectivity will be there, you would like to use it, use the bastion host, no problem. Make sense? Creating more bastion host, definitely it will have the cost implication as well, right? You would like to use the same that you already have in that particular connected network you can use the same until and unless you would like to block them and you would like to have a separate one there is no mandatory requirement that one should have a version host in that network only only then it will allow if it is there in the connected network it can allow just like we are using the rdp machine earlier on so guys i hope you had a great taste of the kind of live sessions live q and a sessions we have and if you really want to learn about the concepts discussed by our expert in depth, then we have something really special for you. We have this free class on Microsoft Azure Solutions Architect certification that is AZ305. And if you want to learn more about it, then you just have to log on to k21academy.com forward slash Azure SA02. In this session, in this free class, you'll be learning about why you should be learning Azure Cloud, your paths to learn Azure Solution Architect Expert Certification. You'll be getting to know a difference between AZ303, AZ304, AZ305, and a lot many insightful things. So if you want to do this, then we all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash Azure SA02. After that, you'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seat now and select your availability according to the event date mentioned. Add your name, add your phone number, add your email, and every detail will be conversed to you via our mail. And after that, just proceed ahead. On the extreme light, you'll be seeing this kind of link. So just copy this link, save it to your calendars, and I will see you in the next class. Till then, 
take care and keep hustling